So it's a pleasure to be invited here to talk about a uh, subject that I've been interested in in the past 15 years when I uh, resigned as a chairman and professor of cardiothoracic surgery at Loma Linda University and devoted my time to uh, restorative medicine uh, where I try to reverse uh, diseases with uh, food and uh, supplementation. And uh, almost immediately after starting my practice in Palm Springs and subsequently Santa Barbara, I was uh, testing uh, for the APOE status of all my patients and became intrigued with the number of my patients uh, who had heart disease, uh, who carried uh, either heterozygous or uh, homozygous APOE4. And so I've uh, spent the last 15 years uh, finding these patients, or often they find me, and uh, designing a program, testing them every three months with uh, biomarkers, cholesterol markers, and uh, I'm going to tell you today what uh, we've come up with so far. That's me. Um, I also run the International Heart and Lung Institute in Palm Springs, but our Centers for Restorative Medicine are now in both Palm Springs and Santa Barbara. Uh, anyone who comes here uh, doesn't think there's much controversy over what constitutes the ancestral diet, yet little if any attention is given to a diet that is compatible or complementary to the true ancestral genome. True. <laughs> Approximately 30% of humans carry one or both copies of the apolipoprotein E4 genotype. The heterozygous ApoE34, about 25% in this room, carry that. The ApoE24, about 2%, or the homozygous ApoE44, about 2%. Sorry, the 2% is missing. The ApoE4 genotype is common to the great apes. In fact, it is their genotype. But only humans can and do carry ApoE2 two, three, and four alleles. The presence of the ApoE4 has been associated with increased susceptibility to accelerated atherosclerosis, which is how I got interested in it, decreased longevity, susceptibility to infectious diseases and Alzheimer's disease by changing the way lipoproteins interact with cell surface receptors and in regulating brain amyloid beta peptides in the brain. I'm going to leave that discussion to my esteemed colleague who will be following me in a brief time. However, I don't like to call this the Alzheimer's gene. In fact, I prefer my patients call it the fragility gene because it affects so many systems that we are remiss to think that this is just affecting memory. Uh, in terms of memory, however, there are statistics. Uh, three fours carry approximately a two-fold increased association with the development of Alzheimer's disease, while APOE 4.4 may increase the risk of Alzheimer's dementia eight to 20-fold, depending on the study cited. So there is a very powerful connection, particularly in homozygous 4.4s. Now, as many of you may not know, Nigerians have the highest incidence of the ApoE4 genotype of any studied population. In fact, it is a huge percentage of their population. Yet their incidence of Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia are extremely low. Age-matched and ApoE-matched African Americans from Indianapolis have been significant have significantly higher LDL and small particle LDLs than their corresponding age match Nigerians and significantly higher rates of Alzheimer's disease. There have been two studies and uh, I apologize, I didn't put the references, I put references on everything else and somehow it missed, but there are two studies done by the same group uh, that have looked at this comparison. And the comparison stands up in a small group study that was initially published and now in a much larger group study. Now, interestingly, despite the increased association of Alzheimer's disease in African Americans with ApoE4 versus Nigerians, what's striking in this comparison study is that elevated LDLC had the highest association with Alzheimer's disease regardless of APOE status. In other words, what this study showed in black Americans versus Nigerians 
that high LDL-Cs was the strongest predictor of Alzheimer's disease regardless of APOE status. And in fact, the Nigerians who do develop Alzheimer's disease, and there are a few small ones, in fact have high levels of LDL-C. Now, great apes carry APOE4. They have at levels of LDL-C that are extremely low and even in captivity have not been shown to develop AD. Perhaps the LDL connection is the missing link, excuse the pun, when carrying a, the ancestral APOE4. Now I want to share with you a number of studies. Uh, first on, the first study is on APOE4 versus the other genotypes in the effect of fats. And then I'm going to talk about in general our strategies uh, that have been studied for reducing the impact of the APOE4 gene. The first study comes out of Spain. The effect of dietary fat on LDL size is influenced by apolipoprotein E genotype in healthy subjects. This uh, study involved 86 subjects. They went on a crossover diet for a month each. They went on a high saturated fat paleo diet. They crossed over to a high carbohydrate, low fat diet a la Ornish or Esselstyn and then were crossed over to a high olive oil MUFA Mediterranean diet with olive oil being used approximately one liter per week. And you'll see another study uh, about that uh, by a similar group in Spain a little bit later on in the talk. Now, interestingly enough, the LDL particle size was significantly higher in subjects with the APOE, they call it the 4-3 genotype, compared to those with APOE 3-3 or 3-2 in the basal state. So this is the first study to actually identify that there's something different about the four carriers that starts them off, or as my friends in the audience, you off, with a higher resting level of LDLC. Now, fascinatingly, the high saturated fat diet increased the particle size in APOE4 subjects the most. But after the, carb low, the high carbohydrate diet, a significant increase in LDL particle size was noted only in the APOE4-3 subjects but it had no effect or actually decreased LDL on the APO3 individuals. In other words, the low-fat diet, which you would think would be extremely good for people carrying the APOE4, had the reverse effect, which I'll try to convince you of why that is in a few minutes. I think this is one of the most important things that anyone in this room can take out of this study is that number one, saturated fat made things worse, and oh, by the way, a high carbohydrate, low fat diet also made things worse. So what are we gonna do about that? This was their conclusion. The hyper response of LDLC concentrations associated with the APOE allele, for allele, occurred only when the fat content in the diet varied. And I'm sorry, I put the same um, conclusion. And there's the reference for you. Now, because of this, we have focused our attention on keeping the small, dense, oxidizable particles of LDL as low as possible <coughs> via a low animal fat, high monounsaturated fat, high soluble fiber, and resistant starch diet. Over the years, we've developed rules. Uh, everyone who I see in my office, I basically write, handwrite these rules uh, right above their APOE4 status. First rule is limit animal fats. And if I did a survey of favorite food of APOE4s, I can usually spot an APOE4 by a food questionnaire because cheese is usually the highest or second highest ranked favorite food of APOE4s. It is so consistent that I, I ought to publish a paper about it, but <laughs> fours love cheese and it's, it's kind of like, I tell them it's your kryptonite. 
Um, and you should stay away from your kryptonite. Uh, our studies over 15 years have found that dairy fats have the strongest correlation to the production of oxidized particles of LDL and that removal or drastically reducing them improves oxidized LDL levels. Rule number three, and this is actually the confirmation of the study I just showed you. Lowering triglycerides lowers oxidized LDL. Now, how do you do that? Anyone who's been to my clinic knows that we limit triglyceride production by lessening sugars, fruits, and seeded vegetables. Seeded vegetables are not vegetables. They are botanically fruits. And fruits contain fructose, and fructose are changed into triglycerides in the liver or converted into uric acid. And my studies have shown that a incredibly limited fruit and seeded vegetable diet is part and parcel with lowering your oxidized LDL. Now, shellfish are emphasized as the animal protein of choice if desired. Owing to our observed small dense LDL lowering when these foods were added, uh, particularly crab. Crab is incredibly effective at lowering uh, small dense LDLs. And I'll show you some studies about the impact of shellfish on cholesterol in just a minute. We further minimize the oxidation of small LDL particles using generous amounts of polyphenol-rich olive oil, as well as the polyphenols in resveratrol, grapeseed extract, turmeric, and pomegranate seed oil and extracts. You'll see this over and over again, and I can't keep mentioning it. The only purpose of food is to get olive oil into your mouth. <laughs> now, why do I say this? There's some beautifully designed, recently published trials looking at the Mediterranean diet and age-related cognitive decline, a randomized clinical trial. Parallel group randomized clinical trial of 447 cognitively healthy volunteers from Barcelona, Spain. 50% were women. Mean age was, set, was 67 years of age when the study started. Participants were randomly assigned to a Mediterranean diet supplemented with extra virgin olive oil, one liter per week. If that sounds challenging, the average Crete uses or drinks about 32 gallons of olive oil per year. My wife and I aim for a consumption of about a liter and a half of olive oil per week between the two of us, and usually we exceed that. The second group had a Mediterranean diet supplemented with mixed nuts. These were primarily walnuts with a few almonds and hazelnuts, 30 grams per day or a control diet, which was actually the American Heart Association low-fat diet. These people were followed for six years. They had neuropsychological and memory tests at baseline and approximately five-year follow-up. All cognitive composites significantly de decrease from baselines in the control low-fat diet. But changes from baseline of the global cognition composite were 0 0.05. Now that's actually positive for the Mediterranean diet plus olive oil, slightly negative, minus 0 0.05 for the Mediterranean diet plus nuts, but, whoops, excuse me, but a rather impressive 0 0.38 cognitive decline for the controlled diet. So my advice to my APOE4 patients has always been that the only purpose of food is to get olive oil into your mouth. I'll probably say that one more time <laughs> throughout the talk. Now what about fish oil in memory? This is a fairly recent study looking at RBC, EPA, and DHA, the two primary components of fish oil. As many as you know, your brain is, depending on who you want to argue with, uh, 60 to 70% fat, 
half of that fat is DHA. The other half is, interestingly enough, arachidonic acid. The best source of arachidonic acid, everyone, is egg yolk uh, and liver, but egg yolk's my preferred way to go. Now, this was the Women's Health Initiative study, and so this was a very good trackable group, and these were extremely uh, late uh, aged women at the time they were recruited. At the time of enrollment, the subjects were 65 to 80 years of age, but if you can notice, the mean age, the average age was 78 years of age at the time of the initial MRI. A total of over 1,000 women were followed for eight years. Now, in fully adjusted models, a one standard deviation greater RP, RBC, EPA, and DHA. By the way, serum fish oil, serum omega fat means absolutely nothing. It tells us what you had for dinner yesterday. RBC, EPA, and DHA index looks at the DHA and EPA bonded to red blood cells. Since red blood cells stay in circulation for about two months of time, this gives us a composite view for the last two months of what was actually circulating in your system in terms of EPA and DHA. So all those fish oil studies you read where serum omega-3 fats are measured, just please uh, find the closest wastebasket or the trash on your computer and throw them away. They're absolutely meaningless. Sorry for that editorial comment. So DHA was marginally correlated, sorry, uh, the, gr the index was correlated with a 2.1 cubic centimeter larger brain volume. DHA was marginally correlated with a total brain volume, while EPA was less so. A one standard deviation greater omega-3 index correlated with greater hippocampal volume, which is where the rubber meets the road in memory. Now, the best part of this study is that comparing the, sorry, wrong button, comparing the fourth quartile versus the first quartile of omega-3 index, in other words, the highest versus the lowest, confirmed greater hippocampal volume in the highest versus the lowest. So DHA in particular is where you want to spend your money and your time in boosting these levels. And my, I didn't put it on the slide, but we routinely measure this every three months. And we, in all of our APOE 4s, we try to achieve uh, indexes of 10 to 12. Uh, normal is 8, uh, so we actually super push this above normal. Now, how about shellfish and cholesterol? This is one of my most frequent comments about everybody knows that shellfish raise cholesterol. Now, much of this data was generated many, many, many years ago when we could measure cholesterol levels in foods, and we only could measure cholesterol, but we could not measure the other forms of sterols. And in fact, shellfish have huge amounts of sterols that actually block and compete with the, with the absorption of cholesterol. And so I use this fact, which is well documented in this paper, which is ancient in the scheme of things. Uh, look what happened with volunteers. In this diet, which was manipulated by the researchers, oysters, clams, crab, and mussel diets, low in cholesterol and high in omega-3 fatty acids, lowered VDL, triglyceride, VDL triglycerides, LDL, and total cholesterol. Squid and shrimp diets did not change blood lipids. The ratio of LDL to HDL cholesterol was decreased on the oyster and mussel diets. Oyster, mussel, and squid diets increased HDL2 cholesterol. And cholesterol absorption was decreased on the oyster, clam, and mussel diets. 
Now you know why shellfish is my preferred animal protein source for ApoE4s. But we've found in our research and looking at other people's research that certain dietary supplements, which are cheap, they're readily obtainable at Costco, at Trader Joe's, online, are incredibly important in this battle. This is a paper published in 2015 looking at grapeseed extract. It ameliorates fructose induced hypertriglyceridemia in rats via increased fecal bile acid and cholesterol excretion and inhibition of hepatic lipogenesis. You want to get cholesterol out of you as fast as possible and you don't want to recycle cholesterol in the enterohepatic circulation. So great seed extract, which is cheap. Uh, again, Costco has a very good brand, True Nature, have no relationship. Uh, we have our patients take two a day. How about grapeseed extract and NAD insert one? This is a paper uh, published just this year in April. Dietary proanthocyanins boost hepatic NAD metabolism and CERT1 expression and activity in a dose-dependent manner in he healthy rats. Now this is in the liver, but I can't imagine that the same thing is not happening in the brain. So here's another exactly what we want to do, and I'm not going to, Dale's going to talk about this, but CERT1 expression is critical to understanding the many faceted effects of the ApoE4 gene. Now how about turmeric? Readily available. If you're buying turmeric, I urge you to look for the word bioparin on the carton. Bioparin is a derivative of black pepper. It's the easiest way to increase bioavailability of curcumin. Uh, it's readily available, just look for the words. There's other great forms of absorbable curcumin that I won't go into today. But the conclusion of this paper is that activation of CERT1 by curcumin blocks the neurotoxicity of amyloid beta in rat cortical neurons. Conclusion from the paper, taken together, our results suggest that activation of CERT1 is involved in the neuroprotective action of curcumin. We found that pretreatment of curcumin prevented the cultural cultured cortical neurons from uh, amyloid beta-induced cell toxicity. In addition, curcumin improved mitochondrial membrane potential, exactly what you want to do, decreased reactive oxygen species generation, and inhibited apoptotic cell death in the uh, amyloid beta-treated neurons. Pretty nice stuff to have circulating around in your brain, I would say. Now. I know this is an ancestral symposium. <laughs> Unfortunately, the paleo diet, with its high animal fat and protein components, produces the exact opposite effect which, to what needs to happen in these people. A fact that we see repeated over and over in our previously naive ApoE4s who come to my office. Now I'm going to show you a patient, and I apologize, it's so small that I don't know how we're going to see it, but this is a young man in his 40s. He carries the ApoE44. Uh, he inherited it from his uh, mother and father, uh, who I also treat. Uh, his, just as an aside, his father came to me 12 years ago, after being diagnosed with 4-4, an incredible executive, real estate tycoon. Uh, he's now in his mid-60s, and uh, he has not had any changes in his mental status over the 12 years that I've known him. But this is his son, and his son is a crazy crossfitter, paleo, uh, cheese-loving, give me triple cream brie slathered on my grass-fed burger, and then I'm going to go to CrossFit. Um, so this little line is what I want you to look at. Uh, sorry. That yellow line. This is small dense LDLs as measured on Singulex. 
and it's hard to see, but he spends most of his time in the 40s and 50s. I want him well below 30. That's when I start calming down and saying, okay, now we're there. Uh, after this test, I said, you know, give me a break here. You know, you don't understand w what you're dealing with. This is killing you, I guarantee it. I said, just throw me a bone. Give up cheese for two weeks before the test and let's do your test. He said, two weeks. I said, yeah, just give up cheese, two weeks. He said, okay. So he comes back. Son of a gun, he's in green. Now, he said, this is great news. I said, oh, I'm so glad you feel this way, you know, uh, that's great news. He says, yeah, I can cheat the other, you know, two and a half months and stop cheese for two weeks and you'll never know. <laughs> and so he did. Uh, and here he is recently and he's still negative. Now, he actually believes that this is okay. He, but uh, for you CrossFitters out there, see this bright red thing up here? Those are, that's cardiac troponin I. It's 100 times more sensitive than the tests we use in the emergency room look for, looking for heart attacks. He had done CrossFit the nice night before. And that is a tiny heart attack that he induced with his CrossFit. And the last thing APOE4s ought to be doing is CrossFit. I apologize. So he's a wonderful example I just had to throw in at the last minute. Using this protocol, we have successfully mini minimized the deleterious effects of this ancestral gene in thousands of patients followed for up to 15 years. With many APOE44s successfully aging into their mid to late 80s, our current oldest one turned 87 a couple months ago, and numerous APOE34s now entering their 90s. Now, this may be the most important thing I can tell you. Many patients arrive later in life to our center and are found to carry the APOE4 genotype. Several have arrived thriving in their 80s with no cognitive impairment. Interestingly enough, in a dietary questionnaire of their habits throughout their life, most of these naive, in other words, they didn't know they had the gene, septo and octogenarians have a lifetime history of eating greens and a dislike for animal products, but not a fondness for grains. Uh, it's been a very, very consistent pattern in my naive APOE4s who are thriving when I meet them. So, eat like a Nigerian who lives in Greece or Italy. <laughs> Thanks very much. Questions? Hello. Hey. I'm wondering if you've had a chance to look at separating out the effects of dairy products from other animal fats. I ask for two reasons. One is that dairy can be very insulinogenic, and the other is that it tends to be a lot lower in monounsaturated fats than, say, beef or pork, which are about half monounsaturated. Good question. We actually uh, have uh, all of our patients only use grass-fed cheeses, uh, cheeses from grass-fed cows, and they're only allowed cheeses from casein A2 producing cows, not casein A1 producing cows. Uh, they don't get uh, really any other dairy products except fermented dairy products. But yes, uh, what we have done is, in most of these people, the first thing we have done is taking away their cheese, We've allowed them to have their grass-fed beef in limited amounts. We've allowed them to have their grass-fed lamb in limited amounts. It, the cheese is the factor that always kind of pops up on these folks. I'm sorry, you know, I'm, because APOE4s love cheese. <laughs> so, hope that answers your question. Well, not exactly, but <laughs> I'm just wondering if you've been able to separate, like done some trials where there, or have seen some trials where there is, um, there is high animal fat, but there isn't high dairy. Yes, we, th th these are these folks. And when the dairy comes out, then they come down. But we, we minimize the animal protein in our folks to about four ounces a day maximum. And we prefer to get their protein from fish because of the omega-3 fats. Okay. And the other answer to your question, 
all of my patients, uh, the three fours and four fours, run very low insulin levels and an incredibly low APOE, uh, sorry, incredibly low hemoglobin A1Cs. In Thank fact, you. someone in the audience has a, yeah, you four, less than 4.2? This young lady is less than 4.2. Uh, uh, she's a 4.4. Oh, she said it, I didn't. Uh, yeah, so she's doing great. Yes, sir. Hi, uh, I may have missed, um, I missed the first few minutes. Um, did you talk specifically about salmon and mackerel and sardines? Yeah, so they, ha they actually are great sources of omega-3 fats, uh, but they're also a source of animal protein. And I won't get into that today, but uh, there's now two very large studies that have recently been uh, published that show that animal protein is just as obesogenic as sugar, uh, something that I've been saying for the last 10 years. And uh, as in the, they'll be in my next book. The, the work that's been done at St. Louis University with calorie restricted society members show that they don't reduce their insulin like growth factor one until they take animal protein out of their diet. And then they approach the insulin like growth factor one levels of vegans. And insulin like growth factor one is probably the best marker we have for accelerated aging. In other words, low is good, high is bad. And so uh, I am a veg aquarian. I eat mostly vegetables with a bunch of shellfish. But I've, through the years, the more I can take animal protein away from humans, particularly the ApoE4s, the better off we are. Because we think that the ApoE3 gene came about to allow humans to handle meat proteins instead of the uh, vegetable diet of the great apes. And how do mussels and clams compare to sardines and mackerel? And They're actually very high in omega-3 fats. But in terms of protein content? Much lower. Because which, which one? Much lower. Mussels, clams, crab, shrimp are much lower in protein content because they have far wa higher water content. Per ounce. Thank you. Yeah. Ooh, don't come near non-fat yogurt. It's pure sugar. <laughs> it's pure protein. Don't come near it. Hi. Um, have you looked at all at coconut oil, coconut milk, and APOE4? Yeah. Um, so here's the deal. This really, 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 really raises your small, dense LDLs. Uh, I see it over and over and over again. Medium chain triglycerides, on the other hand, do not seem to have the same effect. And I, I won't go into that because it's in my next book. We don't have time. Um, but it's because medium chain triglycerides are a medium chain saturated fat, and they're handled completely differently than the rest of the saturated fats in coconut oil. But yes, we, we actually, when we have people come in for testing, we ban coconut oil for 48 hours uh, before the test just to see what their actual baseline is. So I don't recommend coconut oil as a, as a staple for the apoe 4s And that coconut milk as well would be Coconut the milk's okay. It has far less saturated fat in it. Then but you're better off with hemp milk. Um, as a as a milk hemp, okay. yeah. Hey, you Coloradans know hemp. Come on. <laughs> you chew it and you eat it and you smoke it. And, oh, that's its cousin. That's right. Yes, sir. Stephen, what lab do you use if we work in a regular medical clinic? Is this a lab that LabCorp Quest or is this a? Yeah, actually, uh, Quest can do now uh, ApoE fours. Uh, Quest Singulex. Uh, True Health, um, there's a PRISM lab now in Austin, can all run these small dense LDLs. There's now two labs that can run oxidized LDL, and we for the last year have been running oxidized LDLs on all of our patients. One of the labs is Vibrant, uh, the other lab is True Health. Um, it's, it's a the very interesting- gene test. So the gene test, so Quest will do it. Yeah. Um, LabCorp can do it. Okay. Uh, True Health can do it. It's 23andMe. Okay. If, if they're, you know, if money's an object, just say I'm do 23andMe and carry it into you. 
it'll be right. on there. Thank you. Yeah. I think th th this question came up at lunch. I think every human being ought to know their status because there's something they can do about it. This is not so fate. What is, the, what is the, what's the cost of the test? Oh, 23 means what, 99 bucks, uh, 120 bucks? 200 now. Uh, 200 now, they went up. Yeah. But Medi Medicare, pay Medicare pays for the APOE f test. It's uh, Medicare covered. Uh, and, and Medicare also covers the MTHFR mutation test. Does lipoprotein little a fit into this at all? Great question. You wouldn't believe the number of people who carry the APOE4 who also carry LP little a production. I actually think that these two are tied hand in hand. And I believe that, uh, as you know, the a LP little a is sometimes called the Northern European gene, the Irish gene, the Scottish gene, the English gene, because it predominates in northern climates. And Linus Pauling was convinced this was because as we left the Mediterranean, we ran out of vitamin C containing foods in our diet. And vitamin C, as you know, is essential to repair the breaks in collagen that occur in blood vessels. And if you don't have any vitamin C, you hemorrhage internally uh, scurvy, as half the people in ancient voyages died by hemorrhaging internally because they couldn't repair their cracks in blood vessels. So Linus Pauling's theory, which has actually been proven uh, now by Matthias Rath, is that LP little a acted as a Dutch boy who put his finger in the dike and patched these cracks. And if you carried this gene that made LP little a, you would patch the cracks long enough to have babies if, uh, and you wouldn't bleed to death. Now, again, from a genetic standpoint, your genes could care less about you. As long as you make another copy of you, you're now disposable. And so what appears to be a very bad gene is actually an incredibly good gene to produce babies in the Northern Hemisphere. And I have the sneaking suspicion that the APOE4 predominates in certain cultures. I mean, 30% of people carry it because it probably is involved in that spackling com uh, complex and may explain why we get the same lesions in the brain. That's how I got interested in it. Thank you. Great question. So the lab test I've been having a hard time getting outside of specialty labs is the omega-3 index. Who does that? Oh, gosh. Um, True Health does it. Um, True Health's out of Richmond, Virginia. Uh, they used to be called uh, Health Diagnostics, uh, but they're now called True Health. Uh, PRISM, uh, sometimes called PHDX, you know, like doctor, and uh, LabCorp will do it. Uh, we, d we get it down there. Uh, eh. Oregon's different. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. But okay, thank you. Yeah. One minute. Last, uh, he's got his hand up. Can you? No, it's it's a it's a different it's a different protein, but yeah, but you can't blame your six percent body fat on that. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for your attention. Pleasure to be here.